Coincidental design and development occurs all the time, where you'll have two games featuring the same style of play, the same mechanisms, the same setting, the same look, hitting the market near simultaneously or within a few months of one another. It happens because hundreds of game designers are working on thousands of games, and games take years to develop from initial inspiration to final publication. At least they do in some cases. Sometimes you'll have a faster cycle to market, but often you'll have things in the works for years. I've seen games where they were playtesting them, the game wasn't released until four years later, and in the meantime, other games have come to market that seem similar. So now the second one to arrive looks like a copycat of the first, even though it was in the works probably at the same time, possibly earlier. It's just something that happens. And you feel a little bad for the person who's hitting the market second because generally they are not copying, they're not inspired, they just had something they wanted to do and they just happen to come out second. So it happens. And that is the case with Majolica or alternately pronounced Majolica. Uh, this is a style of pottery that originated, as far as I can tell, looking at the little history and the rules and elsewhere, searching online in Mallorca. And it spread throughout Renaissance Italy. There's all sorts of variations on it. And Majolica and Majolica sort of have different definitions. And there's Victorian Majolica. And you can join the Majolica International Society if you want to meet other people, have a little meet and greet and compare things. It's only $65 a year, $75 for people outside the United States due to mailing cost, because they still mail things apparently. There's lots of things about Mayolica. You can spend a lot of time searching online and finding out the history of this, but instead I'm gonna talk about the game. Uh, designed by Wang Yu, published by Blue Magpie Games, and obviously this will be compared with Azul just because they are two games that feature pretty tiles. That is unfortunate for Wang Yu because the gameplay is not similar between them and yet it will be compared in every single thing that everyone ever says about Mayolica, including this video. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about Mayolica. Here are the components in Mayolica. You have a central board where players will draft tiles each round. You shuffle the tiles and lay them out in a four x four grid. There's four colors with each color appearing four times. Each player gets one of the workshop boards that shows four workshops on it. And you will start with one of these orders that's dealt out at random, and you assign it to one of three places on your board. There are variant orders, which we can use or not use as you wish. You have tiles, small tiles that replicate the patterns in the central drafting board. We'll push those aside for the moment. We'll assign the start player token to me, since I am explaining the game. And you shuffle and lay out six order cards that show other patterns people can make during the game. We have some other order cards or mission cards used as a variant, these tiles as a variant. I'll push all those aside for now and focus on the meat of the game. Whoever is start player for the round will draft tiles from the board, and there's three different ways to draft tiles. You can take all of the tiles that are continuous in an exterior row or column. So I could take these four, these four, these four, these four. Let's say I take these, where I get three green and a red. So I take these, I flip them face down. I take three green and a red from the smaller tiles and I assign them to one of my four workshops. If there wasn't room for them, I throw out anything extra that I wish and leave my workshop here. The next player goes, they can draft these four, these four, these three, or these three, or another thing you can do is draft a single tile, say this one, and you take one of the order cards. So they could draft this blue one, and let's say they take this blue order here and they will assign it to one of their remaining slots. Another possibility is to draft a single tile because now if you're drafting from the exterior you can take these four, these four, these three, or this or this because these are not continuous on the outside edge. 
you can take a single tile and rearrange your orders. And you will want to do this because you are trying to fire the tiles in your workshops and then assign them to the order that is assigned for that workshop. So those are the three possibilities. Drafting one exterior edge, drafting one in an order, drafting one and rearranging orders. How do the workshops work? You have certain conditions that you are trying to meet for each of the workshops, which is indicated above. In the first workshop, you need three tiles of one color and three tiles of another color. And when you meet that condition, if you have an order that has room for some number of tiles on the workshop, then the workshop runs, it actually operates. This symbol down here shows that you must take one tile from this workshop and assign it to an order. This symbol shows you can optionally take a second one and assign it to that order. Let's actually take this one. Whatever is left behind, as is shown by the arrow here, gets shifted to the next workshop. And in this workshop, you need to get three pairs of different colored tiles. I already have two right now. If on a future turn I drafted these three tiles, I would get two yellow and a red. I could assign them here, throw out the red, put the yellow in here, and now this workshop is ready to run as soon as I get an order up here. So perhaps on a future turn, I draft something else, a blue tile, maybe I assign it here, and I draft this card to go here, and now this workshop will run where I must take one tile, and I can take up to three and assign them to this order. And then everything that's left here gets shifted to this next workshop. For this workshop, you need two pairs of different colors, and when you get that, one tile will be assigned to an order, one tile gets broken. This is an apprentice tile maker. This one is the old man who does not work very much. He doesn't ship much in the way of tiles, but he sends things over to his helper who's very young, ship so, who ships over three tiles at once, and then you ship over to the apprentice who breaks one tile after moving one tile to an order, and whatever is left over here, so if we ended up with this, and we were able to assign a tile to one of these orders, one goes here, one gets broken, what's left is shipped over to this final workshop, and here you need to get four tiles of the same color. And when you do that, then one of those tiles goes to City Hall to show them how awesome you are as a tile maker. It's a little representative there and it'll go up in their place of honor to show what their work people can do. And you will get a purple Joker tile that you assign to your leftmost workshop. Once the jokers are gone and the joker, number of joker tiles is adjusted based on the number of players, then you will take these, which are worth one point. So you send one to the city hall, one gets broken, and the remaining two get shifted over to the leftmost workshop. The basics of Mayolica are simple. You draft tiles, you assign them to workshops, you complete orders, you will score points. The game ends the round that someone completes five orders. You finish that round, you will then tally up points. You get points for all your completed orders. You get bonus points if you have done good things at City Hall and gotten your one point bonus off of that. And for every two tiles left on an uncompleted order, you get a point too. And whoever has the most points wins. The basics of the game are very straightforward. Draft, complete orders, score points. Okay, but the details of it and how things actually work are much more complicated because of course you're drafting from a shared pool and when people pay attention to what you are trying to do they will not let you do that they will take a single tile because they want to draft a card to fill an empty slot on their board or they want to draft a single tile so that they can switch orders around and complete something that otherwise couldn't be finished because when you fill workshops you're moving only one or two tiles up, or one to three, or just a single tile. So you're completing orders at a very slow rate, except if you complete a, a workshop and ship up to an order, then on your next turn, those tiles have been moved over to the next workshop. You can switch that order over here, depending on what you draft, and possibly you finish that as well, 
and those tiles will get shipped over and then you can move the order over as well and sort of hand things off as you might do in a business where the elder salesman makes an initial sale and does some work on it and then hands it off to you know some other person you go do that work and then you sort of pass it down the line or you can keep the orders in place and just shift tiles through if you plan well so this order on the left needs red and yellow and this order over here needs yellow and green so push the yellow up, the red up here and then slide over the yellow and add green and da, da, da. you try to chain everything together it's this huge logistical challenge that is complicated by the need to draft appropriate things from the central board when the board in the center has three or fewer tiles then the round ends Mayolica starts slowly because you have four empty workshops to begin with and only a single order. So it takes time to build up engines to heat up the ovens as it were. But as the game progresses and you start having tiles in multiple workshops left behind, or as you draft certain things and try to build up combinations, you can chain things together in really interesting ways. So if I draft a single green and put this in this leftmost workshop. So now I have three green and three red. I can trigger this, run the workshop. A green goes up here. This gets shifted over. Everything comes over here. Let's toss the red one. So now I have two red, two green, and two blue. So I have three different pairs and this runs. I put a blue up here. Everything shifts over, which means I'm going to throw away most of it. You cannot throw away the joker, so that must be the thing that shifts over. I now have two pairs, so this one runs. I'll put a red up here, and one red gets damaged and destroyed. The rest of it shifts over. Now I complete City Hall, so one tile goes to City Hall. The joker is removed from the game. I can't be, it can't be reused. One tile gets broken, and then this shifts over to the left. There you go, you ran everything and now I start fresh again, building up the workshops once more. The order that you fill workshops in and run them matters. And you'll have situations where you can run multiple workshops at the same time. If I draft a tile and an order card, I place a tile in the workshop, maybe that workshop is now full and it already has an order card on it. And I have an order card which I add to a full workshop and now that can run as well. And depending on the order that I run things in, I'm going to end up with more or fewer tiles down the line. So you try to time everything. If you've got two right next to each other, if I ran this one first, the tiles would shift over into a full workshop and they'd all be thrown out. So don't do that, right? Run this workshop first, things get moved down the line and then this one runs and then fills this one again to keep this worker busy. So the logistics of filling everything matter a lot and that also comes into play with how you want to move orders around to finish them. Most orders give you only points, three to seven points when you complete them. Some orders as well give you a tile that you can add to a workshop of your choice. And the rules say you can add things or run workshops in whatever order is favorable to you. So again, you complete that order and now you get one tile, you can drop that in, maybe that completes something else and it run, run, runs. The variants included with Mayolica don't add much to the game in terms of complexity, but they do add rules overhead that you possibly want to avoid the first time someone is playing. One variant has these order cards that have blank spaces in them, and you can fill them with whatever color tile you want, but with a normal order card that gives you three points, you need only three tiles, now you need four. So you need more tiles, but you have options on what to throw in there. You have these one tiles, which are worth a single point. And if you manage to run all four workshops on a single turn, you get one of these, one point. Awesome, you're very efficient with your workers. I did not think this was possible when we were first playing and reading the rules. And yet in a game, all three of us did it. So you can definitely do it once you figure out how to run those engines. You also have mission cards where you lay out one more mission than the number of players. You show them at random, and then you draft them in reverse player order, and they give you an additional challenge with a way to earn more points during the game. With this one, for example, when you break tiles by completing your third or fourth workshop, you put the broken tile onto the card, and if you break a tile of each color, then you get two points. 
I'm not sure this is like Alfred E. Newman award for handling tiles. Here, if you take four tiles on a turn, you can throw one tile onto this card, and if you put all four colors on, you get two points. If you've completed three mi three order cards that are worth four points each, or you're the first to complete a three, five, and seven, or you get two jokers, or what have you, they give you a few additional points. And there's an overview of Mayolica, which I played twice on a review copy from Blue Magpie Games, once with two players, once with three. My thanks to Han Wendong, a Chinese-speaking player who lives in my state, but not in my area, who just happened to be visiting this area when this game arrived with only Chinese rules. And then when I shoved it at him and said, teach it to me, he graciously did, instead of saying, forget it. So, thanks for that. The two-player game differs a lot from the three-player game, as you might imagine, in a drafting game. I've missed out on the four-player experience yet, so I have to only imagine that for the moment. But of course, you get more chances to pick at the tiles in the center and get what you want just because there's less competition for it. In a three-player game, someone may take four tiles and someone else takes four tiles and they're gone. You, only, you may get only one shot at it within a particular round. And you really treasure those moments when you start the round and hope to get something perfect for what's available to you. And you can scoop up lots of things at once. With two players, you're kind of picking things apart more and you get more shots and you're trying to break up more readily what you think the other player is going for because you can pay attention to them more in a two player game than you can with three where your attention's a little more divided. It's interesting to see the, the simplicity of it just with the draft tiles, fulfill orders, but the complexity of trying to put everything together so that stuff flows efficiently from one workshop to the next and you can drop things off at each order the best way possible when those workshops are run. Now, of course you have the competition between someone who's trying to do lots of little orders quickly to end the game since the game ends when someone completes five or more orders or someone with big orders that are worth more points but of course take longer to fill because they need more tiles. But again, you've got different size workshops, right? This can ship one to two, this is one to three, this is only one. So if you get those big orders in that second workshop and manage to shove three tiles in each time, perfect, that's great. But can you do that? Can you take all the right cards that you need and then shove everything up there in just the right way? So it's a real challenge to try to do that and it didn't really come together until like, halfway to two thirds through the first game when it suddenly hit and we started seeing it, seeing the possibilities for putting things together. So it's really interesting to see, All right? We got a tile drafting game, second on the market. Let's see a dozen more. I like where these have, have gone. So let's see more of them, please.